Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Job Nimbus 101 workshop for the week. This is the second of our five part series on automations. And we're going to start getting into specific automations that you might like to add to your system to help improve your efficiency, save you some time. My name is Logan. And I'm Dan. And I really enjoy talking about automations. In fact, I'm super excited today to talk about how you can automate your contacts in Job Nimbus. By using contacts to, auto, uh, to create automations, you can uh, send emails when a contact has hit a specific part of your job process. You can create task lists for your team members that show up automatically at the right time. And you can even set reminders based on time a contact has stayed in a specific status, all without lifting a finger, which is really awesome. So real quick, let's go, uh, let's have a quick reminder about what an automation is. An automation is a when, if, then statement. So when something happens in Job Nimbus, if it has these conditions, then do this action. A contact can be used as a trigger record for an automation, and that is found in the when part of this when, if, then statement. And you can choose a contact from the drop down menu right here along with a whole bunch of others that we'll be going over later. So with, uh, let's talk about both event-based and time-based automations, what you can do with a contact in both of those. So with a contact in event-based automations, you can say when a contact is created, modified, or deleted, do this action. Remember, modified is anything that happens in the contacts file. So that is a note that has been added, an email that has been sent or received, a document that has been uploaded, anything. Here we have um, a, what, the conditions for a contact trigger type. Uh, for, by default, Job Nimbus has included type, status, and sales rep as conditions that you can use in the if part of the when, if, then statement. You can also add in any custom field that you have added to your account. Actions are the then part of that statement. And with the contact, with an event-based trigger, an event-based automation, you can create a task and you can send an email. So time-based is actually a little bit different. Time-based says when a contact has been created, status has been changed, data has been updated. If you're using contact scheduling, you can look at the end or, end or start date and time and say, run this automation this much time after that event happens. The conditions are the same, so we're not gonna look at those. The actions, there's actually one more action you can do. You can change the status of the contact using a time-based automation, which can be super powerful. So now that we've under, we understand, we've gone over the specifics of what you can do with a contact in an automation, Let's go through and build a couple of contact, a, a couple of automations together using the contact trigger record. So, business like automations are very repetitive, and one of the things you're always going to be doing with customers is moving them through your workflows, hitting your particular job milestones, the things that tell you, "Hey, it's time to do something new." One of the neat things you can do with your automations is make those particular milestones generate some reminders, some tasks, even some emails to help people know, oh, it's time for me to start doing this part of my job and to let the customer know what you're doing. So let's add a rule name here. And we're going to call this something simple. We're gonna call this when signed contract because we're gonna talk about the things that I wanna have happen in my business when a signed contract has been uh, signed and we've moved a contact to that area. We're gonna make the trigger record event-based because here we're just gonna be pulling a lever as soon as a contact gets to a particular place. In this case, we're gonna want them to be modified. Now let's add a couple conditions. The first condition we're gonna add is a status condition because once again, we want things to happen when they hit signed contract. So let's scroll through here and we find signed contract. I'm gonna leave this only if status is modified checkbox on because that's the lever that we're pulling. We're saying, okay, we got to this part, let's do the thing. And we only want it to happen once. Then we're gonna add another condition for type, just so we're very specific. Type is equal to customer. That's what we wanna have happen. 
But since we're not changing the workflow or the type, let's turn that off. Now, the next thing we have to figure out is, okay, we got the customer, they hit signed contract. This is a big deal. A couple of people have some things to do that maybe haven't been involved with the customer up to this point. So let's add some tasks that are gonna do those things. The first task we wanna add is for our office manager. We want them to review the contract and create the invoice. And uh, since this will be triggering all the time, we do want it to be spelled correctly. So now what our office manager will know, hey, it's time to make the invoice so we can get our first down payment. And we'll assign it to, well, we could do the current assignees or the sales rep, but we're going to assign this to someone specific, Byron, our office manager who's in charge of these things. And we'll save that. Then we're going to add another action. And the next task that we want to make is for our production manager because, hey, they signed a contract. It's time to get them on the schedule. So let's schedule production. And we're going to assign this to Aaron, who is our production manager. So now we've alerted two departments. Hey, it's time to do this thing. We need to get going on this customer so that we're being as efficient as possible. The last thing we want to do is tell the customer thanks and give them some expectations. So we're going to send an email. And I've got a pre-made template here. It's called, we will look forward to working with you. It says, hey, thanks for signing this. We're excited to work with you further. And here are the uh, things you can expect going forward. And since we want to send that to our customer, we're going to send that to the contact. Now, there's all sorts of things that you could do with this particular formula. But the main idea is, hey, we got to a particular place in our workflow. Things need to happen what things need to happen. Why don't we just make that automatically trigger so everybody knows what's expected. And then we can also follow those tasks being checked off so we know what's been done. And if there's no tasks and no communication that we have to do in a particular status, then why do we even have that status? Let's get rid of it. So this is a sort of rule that you could use for a lot of different things. And let's go ahead and save it because it's very useful. That is great. Uh, so let's add another automation rule here. Uh, and this time, instead of uh, trying to organize our communication, we're going to be focusing on data hygiene. Now, I'm not talking about washing your hands after you've touched a flash drive, because let's be honest, no one knows where those have actually been. Let's talk about clearing up your contacts on the board. Now, a lot of times what happens is there's a contact that hasn't had any updates and hasn't been in communication for two weeks or more and they're just lost and then we forget about them they gunk up the board let's clean that up so it's easier for you to work so let's start out by typing in name so contacts uh lost to the void there we go and let's change the trigger type from event based to time based we're still going to use the contacts and we're going to say I want this automation to run two weeks after the last time it's been updated. Now the uh, now this is going to let's say uh, this is going to uh, look at every single contact, and there are some contacts that yeah they are going to sit in a status for more than two weeks, especially like the pending payment contacts. And I don't know about you, but I want to get paid even if they haven't paid me in two weeks. So let's add some conditions here. And we're going to add in some conditions for statuses. So let's say lead status is one, um, presentation status is one, and inspection status is one. Now, all three of these statuses are before we actually sell, um, make the sale. So we're, you know, so those are pretty good. We can consider those lost if they haven't been touched in two weeks. Now, their a contact cannot have all three of these statuses at the same time. So we're gonna say require any to be true. And then we're going to add an action to change the status of the contact. And we're gonna change status to lost and save that. So let's take a look at this. So we say that two weeks after a contact has been updated, if it hasn't been updated, updated in those two weeks, and if the contact status is lead or presentation or inspection, then automatically move that 
contact status to lost. There we go. That is actually going to help you really clean up your board so you're not looking at those contacts that you know are lost and you can really you can really focus on the contacts that you're actually making sales with. Right there, that those are going to help you really uh, clean up your boards and help you focus on communication.